Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to learn about some important plots that you need to present when writing your research papers on concrete strength prediction using any machine learning algorithms or frameworks. These plots are very fundamental to machine learning. They explain about your data from various dimensions. Before we dive deep into today's tutorial, I have a small request. Behind every video, we do a lot of hard work to give you the best content. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Your subscription means a lot to us and it really motivates us to create more useful tutorials like this. Let's dive into today's tutorial. These are some of the important libraries that we will be using in our uh, present tutorial. So the first are uh, pandas and uh, numpy libraries, which we use for uh, data manipulation and the uh, matplotlib and the uh, seabone we use for uh, plotting purposes. And uh, we use this uh, scipy library for some statistical operations. Uh, and uh, we are doing some uh, plot settings here. I'm setting uh, the font to times new Roman and some font size to 12. Here I am importing the data. So this data is uh, obtained from uh, UCI machine learning repository. Here is the concrete data.xls. So this is an Excel file which I downloaded from this uh, repository. So if I look at the data, it has overall nine components of which eight are the input features and uh, the last ninth component is the output feature. So the eight input features are uh, cement, blast furnace slag, fly ash, water, super plasticizer, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, age, and uh, the only one output quantity that is concrete compressive strength in MPA. Here I'm doing some uh, data manipulations. So here I'm just converting the data frame DF to a NumPy array. So after that, I'm just uh, putting uh, the eight input features in the X variable and the one output feature in the Y variable. So if you look at here, the input features comprise of 1030 samples and eight columns and the output feature comprises of 1030 samples and one column. It's a column array. After that, I'm just uh, doing some data cleaning for uh, presentation purposes. Uh, so if you look at the original column names, they look like this so it's very long and uh, ugly to present in the plots actually so what i'm doing is i'm just uh, trimming off this uh, extra content uh, irrelevant content from all these uh, items and i'm just keeping only the relevant quantities like uh, cement blast furnace like the keeping the main names itself just that's it i'm just trimming off all this uh, irrelevant quantities using this uh, strip function so in the end we get uh, names like this which we use them extensively in our plots like this 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 just to indicate the plot either in the titles or in the legends etc so here our main core of the tutorial starts first are the histograms as you know histograms provide a, a visual representation of the distribution of a data set here we are plotting the histograms for each of our input features like cement water blast furnace lag etc this is the code that we have written for uh, plotting these uh, histograms. We are using matplotlib to create a 4x2 grid of subplots. So total 8 subplots, one for each feature. And we are setting the number of bins to 30. This 30 is an arbitrary number. You can choose any number. Here, the x-axis represents the range of values and uh, the y-axis represents the frequency or count of the total number of data points falling within each range. Histogram is a very important uh, statistical tool. These histograms help us understand the distribution of our data. For instance, if you look at the histogram for cement, it has more values in the range of 100 to 400. And if you look at the histogram of uh, blast furnace slag, it has a spike in the beginning, meaning it has around 460 samples with zero blast furnace lag. It means 460 samples of 1030 samples. There is no blast furnace lag at all. Understanding the distribution gives us insights into our data. We can identify outliers, understanding central tendencies, and sometimes we can even detect potential issues like data imbalance, etc. This is crucial for building accurate machine learning models. Moreover, histograms help us choose appropriate data pre-processing techniques. So these are the histograms for cement blast furnace slag, and these are the histograms for fly ash and water. And these are the histograms for super plasticizer and coarse aggregate. These are the histograms for fine aggregate and age. Next, 
we are going one step further we are automatically plotting the distributions over these histograms like this so here uh, we are doing all the necessary programming operations for uh, getting these uh, distributions here we first plot uh, the underlying histogram corresponding to each feature then we fit various distributions like normal exponential gamma and poison distribution to the data finally we select the best fitting distribution using a ks test function this is a function of a scipy stats library and we then plot the obtained distribution curve over the histograms like this by overlaying distribution curves we gain uh, some deeper insights into the underlying data we can visually assess which theoretical distribution best describes our data which helps in uh, selecting our machine learning model and understanding the overall data behavior by visually comparing actual data distribution with the uh, theoretical data distributions we can ensure that our chosen machine learning model aligns with the underlying data characteristics uh, these automatically derived distribution plot serves as a quick assessment of how well theoretical distributions capture the data while these distributions may not be perfect but this approach provides quick and valuable insights into the data's behavior and helps us in doing preliminary analysis so if you look at the cement follows gamma distribution and uh, blast furnace lag is following a normal distribution fly ash water also follows normal distribution and super plasticizer coarse aggregate also follows normal distribution fine aggregate also follows normal distribution but age follows exponential distribution next are the scatter plots a scatter plot is a powerful visualization tool that displays individual data points as dots like this so here is the code uh, use it to generate uh, these uh, scatter plots here in this code uh, we generate scatter plots for each of our input features against the target variable that is compressive strength scatter plots allow us to visualize how changes in one variable such as uh, the cement quantity relates to the changes in the other uh, target variable such as compressive strength here in this uh, scatter plots we can observe data patterns such as quadratic variation or uh, linear variation or uh, nonlinear variation etc we can clearly see what kind of uh, data pattern thus a particular input feature has in relationship with the output quantity or the output target feature for example if the relationship appears linear linear regression might be appropriate otherwise we might need to explore uh, other regression techniques or apply some feature transformations uh, also these plots help us in uh, feature selection these gives us insights about features that are having significant impact on the target variable we can prioritize features that exhibit a strong relationship with the uh, target for model training also these scatter plots clearly shows the outliers these anomalies might indicate some uh, measurement errors data entry mistakes or genuinely exceptional cases identifying and handling these outliers is very crucial for building robust machine learning models so this is the scatter plots for so these are the scatter plots for uh, cement versus compressive strength so here in all these uh, scatter plots we plot uh, the each input feature versus the target feature that is concrete compressive strength next are the pair plots these are most wanted plots and these are a visual feast for uh, data analysts these plots display pairwise relationship between variables in the data set so for example this is the cement quantity and uh, this shows the histogram the data distribution of cement quantity against the cement quantity and uh, this is a scatter plot that shows the how cement is uh, compared against uh, this blast furnace slag and next this is the plot against cement versus uh, fly ash and uh, this is the plot against uh, cement versus water likewise we plot uh, the scatter plots of each variable against each other variable in the data set so overall we have eight input features and uh, one output feature so we plot uh, these uh, pair plots for each one of them against each one of them we look at the main diagonal main diagonal always have histograms and uh, the other uh, plots shows the distribution the other plots shows the comparison of uh, each quantity against each other quantity in the data set generally these pair plots provides a birds eye view of the relationship between all pairs of variables using these plots using these plots we can quickly identify which features are uh, strongly correlated and uh, which features are weakly correlated we can also identify a linear or uh, nonlinear patterns just like 
we have identified in our uh, scatter plots before uh, for uh, many data analysts these pair plots are starting point for data exploration these guides us towards further investigation of interesting relationships and anomalies next in the line are uh, box plots these plots provides a concise summary of distribution of data in the data set uh, this clearly shows some key statistics like median quartiles and uh, potential outliers uh, here in this code we generate uh, the box plot for each input feature these box plots gives us a visual snapshot about the distribution central tendency via median and uh, spread via interquartile range etc we can quickly identify outliers because these plots clearly shows the outliers as individual data points beyond the whiskers these box plots instantly reveals the skewness in the data skewness means lack of symmetry in the distribution skewed distributions may require data transformations for better model performance so these are the box plots for each of the input features next in the line is the correlation heat map it visually represents the correlation between variables in a data set it uses colors to indicate the strength and direction of the correlation here using this code we generate a correlation heat map for our data set this displays the correlation coefficients between each pair of features correlation heat map allows us to quickly identify relationship between variables such as strong positive correlations that is values closer to 1 this indicates that as one variable increases the other tends to increase as well and uh, we also have strong negative correlations that are uh, values closer to minus 1 these indicates that when one variable decreases the other tends to decrease uh, so overall in our data set we don't have any strong positives or uh, strong negatives so understanding about um, these pairs of features with a high correlation are very important because they sometimes indicates potential multi collinearity issues multicollinearity is a statistical phenomena that occurs when two or more input features in a regression model are highly correlated with each other and in this situation it's very difficult to separate the contribution of each feature and assign separate weights to them overall these uh, six plots are very important while writing research papers on uh, concrete compressive strength reviewers expect these plots so make sure uh, you put them in your research paper before sending it for review that's it for this tutorial if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section if you like our content please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel happy learning thank you